Right, okay, let's get this all glued up. We've got some pins, we need some glue. So again, we've got our primary post that we're going to stick in place. And we're going to pop that back in with the same holes that we put the pin in. Not a little tip you can if you don't want to actually, this won't do mega damage, but you could actually put the wood either side if you wanted, a pin side either side. And then that would just clamp the wood in place. It's a bit more long winded and really I don't think the the holes going in here are going to be a mega problem. So there's one. So again, like I always said earlier, measure twice or offer up twice and glue once. So there's our first piece. We're going to get our glue and I'm just going to run a small bit of glue on there. Like so. And then I'm just gonna. Now, what I normally do is with this, particularly with this PVA type glue, I've glued, put a bit of glue on the end. I uh, just offer it up so that the glue actually rests against the other piece of wood. And then I'll just take it off. So you've then got glue either side. You don't want to go mad with the glue because the problem is, is that the more glue you use, one, the heavier the, the glider's going to be. And particularly with a glider, we're always looking for lightness. So I've got that in place. I'm just going to stick that there and give that another little tap. There we go. That's lovely. If you've got a little bit of excess glue, just literally get a tissue and just wipe that bad boy off. So then we're going to get to the next piece, which is the top piece. Now we're just going to make sure we get the angle round the right way so we don't end up, because the top piece is angled. So again, I'm just lifting it up to see what I can glue. A little bit of glue. And then I'm just going to offer that up like so. Again, I'll give it a bit of a push to make sure that it's all Got a nice bit of contact. And then what we're gonna do is we'll pop the pins in. So people might be asking me why I've decided to do this in Dutch as well. Uh, I've been modeling model airplanes. I haven't got the looks of modeling. I've been modeling for years and done a lot, been very fortunate to do a lot of international competitions and dare I say it, some of my best friends have always been the Dutch people. So they'll appreciate this humour. Skibner and on your crack, on your raja, and she glushing and then she having she smoke afterwards. Um, so I'm just going to do this last final bit there. And my Dutch friends have always got a great sense of humour. They won't take offence at this. I half expect a video to be coming back very shortly. So, now the last top piece, oh, nearly forgot there. I've got two pieces to actually glue together. So I've got my two bits there. Just remember, so what I'm doing is I'm just offering that up and I get it in place. Make sure that it's all touching nicely. And then I normally just remove it, just for 10 seconds. And I normally just put that back in place. There we go. And I'm just gonna make sure that that's pinned in. And there we go. That is the first part of the structure of our West Wing Swallow. Now, the only other thing we have to do now, is we've got those two pieces in place, the, sorry, the four pieces in place. The only other piece, this is where your three by three comes in. And then literally all you do is you offer that across the top. And then if you just look down and run that across the edge like so, these are what are known as infills. So I've just marked that, they're at a slight angle. I'm just gonna do that like so. Again, 
off of that up, make sure it's in the right place. That is picture perfect. So again, a little bit of glue. That's going on the end. Um, worth reading the instructions on the PVA because sometimes some of the glues will say, you know, apply and then leave, leave a couple of, couple of minutes before you actually stick it to the wood. But again, I'm just gonna get that in place. That's going in there like so. A bit of excess glue there. Look at that, made for the job. So, one last piece of the 3mm by 3mm square. Again, if you use the last angle from the last piece that you cut, it's going to be the same angle. And then if I just lay that across there, this one now, because we've got the angle at the other end. I'm just going to get my sighter there. And then I go square with that. There we go. And again. We're just going to pop that in there like so. Little tip here, if it's a little bit tight, in other words you need, what you want to try and do is just actually thin it out with just using a little bit of sandpaper block. Because if you use the knife, I can guarantee you, by, by the thickness of the blade, you'll cut that too short. So any little bits that need adjusting, Try and do very gently and a good tip to get into right at the start. Always put the lid back on your glue because that is the most annoying thing when you come down in the morning or the next after next day to do some building and then you're all ready to go and you realize you've left the top off your glue and it's all gone off. Right, let's have a quick look. Now, because these are wedged in, I'm just having a feel and make sure they're all flat and square, which they are. I don't need to do any pinning so I'm just going to leave that that is the rudder finished so that now takes um, 24 hours to go off um, I think these instructions say it's a little bit shorter than that but I'm going to leave that it's saying it's maximum strength is one to two hours there so I'm going to leave that now and I'm going to carry on with the rest of the structure you don't really need me to show you because the rest of this tail fin is exactly the same as I've done there you don't want to watch hours of video of me just trolling along doing that. So I'll catch you later. Right guys, just wanted to show you this because this is, uh, it's not a problem come up, but there's a, a technique here which I think I just need to explain. So I've started doing the tail plane. It's exactly the same construction, uses exactly the same three by six mil wood for the main structure and the infills are um, three mil square. It's exactly the same as building that, so no big deal about the different techniques. So I can leave you to carry on doing that. Now, the next thing is, is the moving bit on the back of the tailplane is called the elevator. Now this requires for a small piece of um, three mil squared hardwood to be joined. So that's actually going to be stuck in there. Now the reason for that is, is as those controls are going to move up and down, what we don't, we don't want any twisting. So if we used a soft piece, it would easily break and it twists really easily. And that wouldn't be very good when we're trying to control it. So we, needed, uh, we need a fairly hard structure here. So I've already cut one already, but I thought I'd just quickly go through um, what's actually meant to happen. So this will help you when you get to that point. So the idea is, is that really what you've got to basically do is cut this hardwood into the three by six wood, which is exactly what I've done there. Now to help you and make more accurate cuts, what you want to do first is I cut the two pieces of wood to their lengths and the right angles, like so. Now, what I've done is I've moved those out of the way. I've then put this, um, the three mil squared hardwood in place. And you'll notice, because I'm using grease proof paper to cover mine, I've just marked two pencil lines of where the hardwood actually finishes. Now, interesting to note that the hardwood they've actually given me is about three or four mil shorter than actually on the plan. Structurally, not a big deal, but what you don't want to do is actually be cutting it to plan. 
So what I've actually done is I've actually just marked with a pencil downwards on the plan where the hardwood finishes. So what I then do is I'm just going to offer up that piece of wood where it should go, like so. But obviously there's a gap because the hardwood's in place. I'm going to run a ruler over and I'm just going to be possibly slightly short on that. Don't be long on this. So I'm going to say long, don't overcut this. You want to be slightly short and if you can then you might have to sand to place. So I'm just going to mark that there. Now I've gone all the way down but I don't need to go halfway down. All I then do is you then get your piece of uh, three mil squared and lay it on top of the wood so basically where it's going to sit before we've cut it and then all I then do is then just mark a pencil underneath it like so so now I've got let me just put that in place there make sure we do that accurately and we're going to run that across there now I've now got the section I need to cut out uh, what I would suggest is is cut across the grain first and then when you cut along, then what happens is that grain, cutting across the grain first, will stop you splitting the balsa. So uh, just as I've done with this one, you can see I've cut it, notched it down. Um, that fits in there like so, and that's, uh, that's how it goes. So just to bear in mind that that's uh, something you just need to be aware of when you, when you get there. When you've then got there, you can then cut that little section in, but cut it slightly short, as I say, and then just if you need to, possibly sand it so it's a lovely, accurate fit, because that's part of the controls, and it's important that we have a good gluing structure there.